Hi guys, this is Klazar, bringing another audio commentary, and uh, this time I'm commentating on the MSL Group H round of 32. This is the final group of the uh, round of 32 of the MSL this season, season 4, and this is game 1 of that group, and this is between Nada and Quanro. Uh, and I'm actually looking forward to this match quite a lot. This is being played on Zodiac. Um, I'm interested in seeing this match because I felt Nada was uh, quite unlucky to crash out of the on game net duel tournament versus Yarnak. He went for a little bit of a silly build and unfortunately paid the fr price for it, uh, but I'm really hoping he's going to produce the goods today. I thought he was really unlucky um, in the on game tool tournament and I think he's got a good chance of doing well this season if he can pull it together and perhaps bring a few good wins. Um, Quanro on the other hand isn't a player I'm too familiar with. He plays for CJ Entis and has played a few games in the Pro League uh, but is not nearly as masterful in his Zerg um, play as a Savior who probably is his mentor. However that being said having a player like Savior mentor you is bound to lead to some sort of success at the very least. So uh, both players starting up here Quanro at the 3 o'clock position, not at the 6 o'clock position. I think these kind of positions usually, in my opinion, help the Terran player. The shorter push distances uh, can be vital in an early Medic and Marine push, and as well as later on, uh, when if, if the Terran player just does choose to go for a standard tank push build. I like this map. It's a lot like uh, Python, and I do expect uh, a, a good matchup between these two guys, hopefully, here. So Quanro is scouted uh, counterclockwise, interesting enough. A lot of players have been scouting counterclockwise recently, so his Overlord has headed over to the 12 o'clock position where he's not going to find anything. Uh, and he's just sending a couple of drones out now, and this is interesting that he's sending a couple of drones out. I would have guessed one drone at least would probably be to set up his natural expo. The other is probably just in case there's an SCV there uh, and he needs to ward it off, or probably, or, or maybe he's trying to be extra clever and hide another um, expo somewhere, or just send that drone out to scout since he hasn't found his opponent's base yet. More than likely, it's just it's for the purposes of scouting. So he has gone for his natural expo. Looks like it's a 12 hatch build. I suspect Connor will probably put the spawning pool up next. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen a, a player go three hatches before spawning pool. It is a, a relatively risky build, but I think on a map like this it can pay off. Nada has gone uh, for his Barracks first, and indeed Quanro has now put up the spawning pool. And I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten drones uh, in his main. So that that would indicate that he probably did go for a twelve hatch. So Nada's got his barracks up and going. Quanro's actually got his um, drone over now in Nada's base. The barracks is complete. He's trying to take that SCV down, but he's not going to be able to. Uh, Nada sent his scouting SCV out as well, and he's interesting enough sent it all, sent it in a clockwise direction. So he's going to miss Quanro's base initially with his first SCV. He's just going past the overlord there. His second SCV we should find Quanro's base, and uh, it'll be interesting what sort of strategy Nada opts for here, whether he's going to, we saw Uvi on this map uh, doing a second hidden barracks, uh, but I think that might be a little bit more difficult for Nada, considering that Quanro has actually got drones wandering around, he's not relying entirely on Overlord to scout. He's got the spawning pull up as well, and we just see whether he decides to try and tackle a little bit, or whether he's going to use, and Quanro just sending a couple of drones out, trying to block that SCV, this is this is good timing of Quanro, I, I don't think those drones were actually meant to try and block that SCV from Nada scouting into his base, I think he was just sending them to mine at the natural expo, but it was good response for him, from him to actually see that SCV and, and try and take it out as it was going up the ramp towards his main. Nana, oh my god, Nana's actually gone for the fast expand. So Nana's gone for racks into command center, and this is a very risky build, especially if his opponent hasn't gone for the third hatchery, which he has. He's also got six Zerglings out, so now Nana's got the SCV in his base and he's seen his opponent. And I think that Quanro's build to actually get that spawning pull up first is, is going to suit him because it's going to help him detect quite fast, and he might be able to cause some trouble to, to Nana. Uh, the, the key question is whether or not he's going to scout that command center and how early he's going to scout that command center. And now he's got a f group of links coming in, heading down towards Nada's base. And Nada might find himself in a little bit of trouble here because there's about six to eight links there, and Nada only has got four marines, uh, and he's got nothing really to, to block those zerglings. And he might be in a little bit of trouble. He, he needs at least a couple more SCVs to actually help him defend. He's now actually taking ref refineries as well, to pump marines from his barracks. But Nada might find himself in a little bit of trouble here if he, if he, if uh, Quanro can manage to take out his marines. So Nada being forced to pull back with Nada. He's got some of his marines dropped. This is poor position by Nada of his marines. This is a very poor position. He's going to lose most of his marines here. Nada's in huge trouble now because he's only got one marine. He's going to be forced to pull his SCVs off the line, and Nada's in huge trouble here um, because he, he was forced to pull his SCVs off the uh, he was forced he lost all, all he's lost all his marine he's now been forced to pull his SCVs off the line he's also lost the SCV that was building the command center so this is going to set him back a long way Quanro excellent micro with his zerglings but I've seen Nada leaving himself a little bit trapped not pulling his marines back onto the ramp and exposing himself to those zerglings uh, and I and I felt he would have been done much better to actually have pulled those marines all the way back onto the ramp and I don't know why he didn't do that and also now he's got about five or six SCVs that are not mining his main mineral line because he's had to pull them off to help him defend against Quanro's zerglings so basically what Quanro's response is whether he just decides to do a quick tactile air uh, and take advantage of 
slowing that economy down, and he is exactly doing that, and I would expect him to set up the spar as soon as that's finished. So Nada in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, Quanro continued to pop more Zergings out, Nada with only a single Rax. Uh, and I have to say, it, it, it was a relatively risky strategy without being aware of what his opponent was doing, uh, and also not really... Uh, I guess it would have paid off if Nada had defended better, but certainly uh, I, have to, I have to feel that his defense wasn't as good as it could have been uh, on this occasion. He's now building a second barracks, and once again, he's only got a handful of Marines. Quanro trying to barrel up that ramp with, with Zergings, and he might be able to do some damage now that economy here. Nada managed to block again with the SCDs. So Nada not really getting the benefit of going for putting that command center down, going to double CC, uh, and and this is was this was the benefit of going for that spawning pool for Quanro after putting the hatchet down instead of going for a three hatchet build, which is probably what Nada expected. I think Nada suspected that Quanro would, would go for a, a, a twelve drone three hatch build uh, and and didn't expect the spawning pool, didn't expect Quanro to invest eight Zergens in. Not unusual, but he's got a medic up, but he's lost all of his Marines, and now he's going to lose all of his SCVs as well. This game is really slipping away from Nada. I don't think he can come back from this. Looks like this is going to be GG to Quanro. Quanro with some excellent instinctive play against Nada, producing those eight Zerglings and catching Nada by surprise. I think he saw the late barracks, he saw Nada's barracks being built, saw an opportunity for himself, uh, and with his initial Zerglings, just managed to ca ca catch Nada off guard. And now he's got the Spire building, he's got the Lair up, and he's got loads of Zerglings streaming into Nada's base, and there's really nothing Nada can do about it at this point. He's got a couple of Fire Bats up, but it's too little too late. And you have to say, perhaps if Nada, I don't know if, if Nada had pulled those initial Marines back onto the map when Quanro first came in with his initial Zerglings, would he have survived? Uh, would he have been in a, in a stronger position? Uh, but whatever said and done, he didn't, and um, he isn't. And now he's going to lose the game to Quanro. So disappointing for me to see Nada crash out so spectacularly in game one. Um, hopefully he'll produce something better in the next game. Um, but I'd be very disappointed to see him go out at this stage. And again, Nada continues to confound me with his choice of strategies. I do, or, or I suppose it's it's unfair to blame it on his choice of strategies. It was just poor micro that did him in the end. This is Klazar, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that game. Um, disappointing though it, as it was for Nada fans. Oh, you're the